you're in Afghanistan and you're limited to 30 minutes online, are you going to spend that 30 minutes reading all the various news sites? Or are you going to spend that emailing your friends and your wife and your girlfriend or whatever? So I suspect that news is pretty low on the priority there and they would rather have the print product in their hot little hands. You do it both at the same time. It wasn't a hallmark moment. That's <laughs> damn true. Even well after their deployment, members of Company F 425th Infantry still get together regularly. As National Guardsmen, they've known each other for years and they live in the same area. So they've all showed up for a convivial dinner at the home of Gunston Street cartoonist Basil Zavisky. They talk sports, they talk Michigan's depressed economy, and they talk about their 2004 deployment. In the reserves or the guard, the guys come in and they stay for a long time, 8, 10, 12 years, you know, so, and, and then you go through a war together. You go through the, the, this, uh, you know, this experience together and, and you become a brotherhood, you become like a family, you know. I've served with these guys for years, so when we went out there, it, it really meant a lot because there was not much of, you had to learn how the other guy acts or works. You knew it. On his website, Basil has put together a music video about the deployment, blending his cartoons with stills and home video. Company F is a specialized unit. Uh, long range surveillance. Worked in six man teams, sometimes we did two teams. The missions were intense, but there was also plenty of downtime. The equipment I had was very crude. But uh, any chance I got, I just uh, threw some strips down. The guys seemed to like it, so and I enjoyed them liking it. Oh, I thought it was cool. It was great. Basil had been doodling and drawing since childhood. The strip is named after a street he grew up near in Detroit. He started Gunston Street before Company F even got orders for deployment. You know, obviously, the, the main focus was the missions. You should get some comic relief if I could draw something up. Yeah. The main character is named Phil, after Basil's dad, and he's drawn to look like Phil, too. <laughs> Immortalized? Yeah. I, I really enjoy it because people recognize, they look at this picture, and they say, that's you. But the experiences are those of Basil and his team. There's really nothing in there that's made up or fake, you know. It's funny stuff, but funny stuff happens during, you know, during wars and... You know, why not? I've received tonight's mission. Eric Hennings was team leader. It takes place at 2230. We're leaving out of gate nine. We'll head east on IED Alley for three clicks. We'll then cross IED Alley to the north side and then skirt for two, three clicks, setting up our observation point off of IED Alley. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. I understand I'm not in charge of anything and that our missions are determined by a bunch of officers that never leave the wire. But is there any way possible that we could consider avoiding this so-called IED alley? Boom, boom, <laughs> it's kind of fun when they see it and they bitch, you know, oh God, that's, that's not me, you know, so it's, I get a kick out of that. He captures everybody real, real good. You know, it makes light of a lot of situations that, you know, it weren't funny at the time, but now you can look back and laugh at it, you know. Sergeant Walter Crump, called dirty within the team, appears in the strip as Crump. And Staff Sergeant Chris Sesney is named Sesney. When I first went to basic training, a good friend of mine told me, you just got to laugh sometimes when it gets really crazy. And it's kind of the same thing. You know? If you, you got something, you see other people going through the same thing, and you can, you can laugh about it. It makes it a lot easier. It, this could pertain to so many different things. So many things are so stupid. You're just like... Am I going to ask this question or is somebody else smarter than me going to ask this? But are you taking your snowshoes? It's a little warm in Iraq, stupid. There's a strong military tradition in the Savisky family. Basil served with his father in the Michigan National Guard for years, and grandfather Jim Etherton was with the 82nd Airborne in Europe during World War II. 
he learned to appreciate the joy cartoons can bring to the front lines. In the airborne World War II, these, everyone looked for the Stars and Stripes every month. I was over there for over 18 months, I got two letters. I moved around so much that the mail never caught up with me. Basil writes some strips about communications with home. His wife Lena does the lettering for Gunston Street and corrects his frequent misspellings. She says working on the strip has helped her understand his deployment. He wants to get his experience out to everybody, let everyone know, you know, what he's gone through. And uh, the exposure, it's not about money, it's just about, hey, this is Basil Zavisky. These are my comics. You like them, fine. If you don't... But he believes you really can't make this stuff up. Any funny strip, the best ones I got, have to be based in reality. If I was trying to force something and tr trying to create something, if it's not based in some kind of reality, it, it will show. He always has a small notebook within reach to record ideas or recollections as they strike him. I'll write down 50 ideas or more, and then uh, out of 50, I'll probably use three. I got some strips here I've been sitting on for over a year because the punchline ain't right. But in the creative process, is there's no set structure. I just write down a note, look at it, I'm like, hey, cool, that's funny. And if it ain't, well, yeah, can't hit them <laughs> out of the ballpark every time. Basil calls his method old school. He sketches and inks everything by hand before scanning it into the computer and posting it on his web page. Most artists do at least part of the process electronically these days. He's proudest of one extended set of strips that isn't meant to be funny. It recounts a mission when the team was assigned to convoy duty. It's drawn in a more realistic style and has some of the pop boom pow quality of adventure comics. I did a small graphic novel type. And uh, I, I got some satisfaction out of that. Just trying a different technique. Uh, it, was, it was fun, you know, just I, I got to expand a little bit. The team was ambushed twice in the course of the mission, coming under heavy fire each time. Everyone came through the night fine, but conveying the experience was an important step for Basil. Because it took me out of my comfort zone of just the comedy aspect. It gave me a chance to do something else. I'd have to say I was pretty satisfied with that. The next strip in the series was a return to the regular cartoon characters and a tribute to Bill Malden. Uh, I was glad he's out there. His work is outstanding. And uh, I, should, I still read it today. Uh, I look at it. I don't read it. <laughs> Phil and Eric are speaking after the mission. Wow, that was crazy. I thought we were dead. We were taking fire from everywhere. Trucks burning, RPGs, you name it. I was glad to see you guys show up. You guys tell war stories? I'm just happy to be alive. You wouldn't understand. You just had to be there. You'd be amazed by what we understand. It's universal. The same problems we had, they're having right now. And they had 20 years ago, 50 years ago. I mean, some in the army never changes. And as far as uh, the people that read the strips, hey, I hope you enjoy it. I hope I, if, if there's something, uh, I just hope you keep entertaining them. That's it. That's it. Basil Zavisky, Julie Negron, and Gunnery Sergeant Charles Wolf are all trying to supply that comic relief to service members and their families and keep up that proud tradition of military cartooning. I'm Staff Sergeant Brian Buckwalter. Thanks for watching Recon.